G'day everyone. In today's video, I'll be giving a brief update on my breeding pair of knobtail geckos, Wingus and Dingus. I've had these guys for just on two years now, and apart from a couple of small issues, they've been pretty easy to look after. One of the biggest things that's happened recently is that Wingus has laid her first clutch of eggs. I'd noticed about a fortnight ago that she'd started digging around a lot, and then a couple of days later she laid these two eggs deep inside a burrow. I've currently got them in this bodged up incubator, I made out of an old esky. These will also be the first eggs I've ever raised, so fingers crossed they should hatch sometime in April this year. So to celebrate, I decided to make my geckos a brand new enclosure. Now if you've seen the video where I rehoused my morphed axolotl, you'll know about a year ago I bought a fish tank that ended up being delivered broken. And, well, I finally got around to finding a good use for it. The first thing I did was I removed the broken panel, then I flipped the tank onto its back and I glued a new panel of glass onto where the top used to be, making it into a slightly wider and shallower tank than their old one. I've also added one of these store-bought reptile backgrounds. I've never used one before, and even though the styrofoam kind of sticks out like dog's balls, it was going cheap so I thought I'd give it a go anyway. But I have already noticed some problems with it, so I may end up removing or replacing it in the future. I pretty much just went with the same setup as before, with an undertank heater that will give me a nice gradient of a cool side and a warm side. I also placed everything in the tank with the same layout. It's been working for me so far, so there's no need to change things around. It should also help reduce any possible stress that the geckos go through when I swap them over. And once I'd put them into the tank, I left them for a day or two before I offered them any food. So far I've only gotten these guys to eat crickets and cockroaches. They've never really shown any interest in other feeder insects like soldier fly larvae and mealworms. They usually get fed every two or three days, and once a week I'll dust their food with a calcium mineral supplement. The female has always been a bit of a champ when it comes to feeding. I don't think she's ever rejected a meal since I've had her. But she can be a bit of a bully when it comes to letting the male get his fair share of the food. And because of this, he'd started losing a lot of weight. So to help give him a chance, a few months ago, I started removing the female after she'd eaten and started to feed the male while he had the tank to himself. Since then, not only has he started to put his weight back on, but he's now being more assertive with the female in general. And now that I have a spare tank, this leads me to my other news. I was at the Penrith Reptile Show over the weekend, and I picked myself up a new juvenile knobtail gecko. And this is Little Hob. It's an unsexed, patternless morph Levis Levis. And it is a bit flash. Even with my colour blindness, I can still see how vivid the colours are with this beautiful little animal. And I've got my fingers crossed that this is a little female. So hopefully, when she's older, I can try pairing her with Dingus, who's also a patternless morph. And if it's a boy, I'm going to try swapping the two males over in the main tank once in a while. Till then, this one will be staying in its quarantine tank in a separate room for the next few months. Well, that'll be it for this update. I'll keep you lot informed on how the eggs turn out, and if there's anything else you'd like me to do an update on, please leave it in the comments below. Till then, I'll catch you in the next one.